Hi folks, Mr. Prepara here with you. Again for this lesson we are going to analyze the impact of tariffs on domestic markets and we are going to make sure in this lesson that we have the tools necessary to get those graphs correct. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at just any market and uh, we have a downward sloping demand curve, we have an upward sloping supply curve. I have um, made a note of my equilibrium price and I have called it in this particular case PDOM that is the domestic price and then I have noted my domestic quantity and labeled it QDOM right now we assume here that this market is a domestic market only and it is not open to free trade so there are no imports coming into this domestic market at this particular time. We note that at this particular equilibrium that the consumer surplus uh, for this market is bounded by the, uh, in terms of its upward margin, by the uh, upward, upper slope of the demand curve and uh, is above the domestic equilibrium. We're also going to make note of the producer surplus. Those are uh, producers down here on this low end of the supply curve that were willing to sell for less than an equilibrium price, went to the market and found that they could get more, so of course they do. So uh, this area here that I've noted as producer surplus is bounded by the equilibrium price and it, it is above the supply curve. When a nation opens itself to free er or free trade we assume at least as, as economists that the world supply looks pretty elastic and you note that by a horizontal supply curve so what that means is that this nation really we assume that this nation has opened up to every single supplier in the world that could possibly participate in this particular market. Is that a realistic assumption? Yes and no. Um, you know, no because there in the real world there are transaction costs, there are um, an abundance of barriers to trade that impact the, the financial you know transactions between any two nations but in a theoretical sense uh, it is a realistic assumption for us to make because it um, it gives us the opportunity to sort of assume away transaction costs and any kind of political disputes that have occurred between two nations that can oftentimes come in and impede trade so um, in a theoretical sense then we can make this assumption and at least give us a sense of what the outcome should be when a nation opens itself up to free trade in an ideal setting. So note that in this particular case we assume that the world supply has come in at a lower price than the domestic supply and that is because we're assuming that uh, nations that this this nation is trading with uh, have a comparative advantage in producing whatever it is that this good or service is and that they are supplying that on the global market and then, then that those goods and services are coming in at a lower price than the domestic price. So the first thing we want to do is uh, we want to make a note of this particular point and that is where our world supply cuts across our domestic supply. It does so at QDOM1. What that means is from zero to QDOM1 that is the amount of supply that the domestic market now is willing and able to furnish at this particular price. So it had been selling QDOM, but now because of world trade, its revenue and sales have been restricted to QDOM1. So for producers, it seems like opening the market up to freer global trade in this particular case has not been a fantastic thing because they've seen their revenue dwindle quite a bit from this square 
that I'm outlining with my cursor to this smaller square that I'm outlining here with my cursor. So we're just going to take a look then at uh, this particular nation. Uh, we, we see when it's opened itself up to free trade that its producer surplus has fallen from my larger rectangular area that had shaded in in pink before the analysis started to the smaller triangular area that I'm now outlining with my cursor. What's happened to consumer surplus? Well, at this lower price, of course, consumers are willing and able to, to increase their purchases of whatever good and services uh, this particular is. And so their consumption will increase all the way out into to, to D world, this point here that I'm indicating with my cursor. And so that increases then their consumer surplus to this blue shaded area that uh, I've noted in my graph. The size of the imports, well, that would be the difference between the domestic consumption, which we said was out here at D World, and the domestic production, which we said was here at QDOM1. The difference between those two particular quantity points is what the global market now is furnishing here in our domestic market, and these are our imports. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the, that situation and see what happens when a nation decides to pass a tariff, see what happens to the size of the imports, to the domestic production, and to the domestic consumption. So a tariff, and as we have noted in earlier discussions that a, a tariff is a type of per unit tax and any per unit tax is a tax that is placed on every single quantity here and it's a specific amount so what we can do then is we can increase the, our supply curve because this is a price and we can add a specific amount of unit price to every single quantity along the supply curve so what a tariff looks like because it is a type of per unit tax is it looks like our supply curve in this particular case has been shifted up now it hasn't in reality all we've done is we've added a certain vertical distance of price or tax to each uh, unit that has uh, been for sale in the market so uh, we want to label then our new curve supply world plus the tariff and that's going to create for us a new set of points here. The first one that we're going to note here is that our domestic consumption has fallen from where it had been at D World before the tariff was passed to now D New, which is uh, the consumption after the tariff is passed. So in terms of our domestic consumption, because the price has been raised, the consumption does fall to D New. We also want to make a note of where our new production is and again that has uh, increased from where it had been at QDOM1 which is where I was in the, I'm indicating with my cursor to now QDOM2 so what this means is because the market price has been raised by the tariff to this particular point that I'm indicating with my cursor it has allowed some domestic producers to continue to stay in the market and continue to sell their their product so uh, this tariff is good news for producers who see their consumer surplus increase as I've just indicated on the graph and not so great news for consumers who have seen their consumer surplus decrease to the amount that I'm indicating with my cursor likewise too, the value of imports has decreased from where it had been without a tariff uh, to where it is now at D new minus QDOM2. So what we see then is that a tariff really benefits, at least seemingly, uh, domestic producers by allowing them to sell more at a higher price than they had been without uh, the tariff. For consumers, it's a bit of a different story. We see that their consumption then is decreased and the value of their consumer surplus has decreased as a result of 
the tariff. So I hope this made sense for you. This is a very simple video about the impact of tariffs on a domestic market. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks.